Uh, today we're going to wrap up with a short spiel about metaphysics and meaning. So I spoke about this in Year 10 RE a couple of years ago, but I only gave you a very slight intro to it, and maybe you won't remember anyway. So if you ever come to um, to my house, I, I, I like different piece, pieces of artwork, you know, and not many, but this is one of them that I like. Um, so I have a, a canvas of this. Um, and does anyone know what it is or who it is? I don't remember his name, but he rolls the boulder up and then he gets right to the top and it's like just rolls back down. You have to keep doing it. That's right. Yep. 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 Do you remember his name? So this is Sisyphus. Uh, and so he's a, he was a Greek king, and so it's a Greek myth, right? He was a Greek king, and he was a bit of a naughty boy. Like he caused lots of trouble when he was on, um, he was having his time, and he sort of tricked the gods and so forth. And so for his punishment, he is hell, so to speak, is to roll this boulder up the hill every day. He's to struggle against the weight of this boulder, and he's wanting to roll down, he's to push it up. And it gets to the top, and when it gets to the top, it just rolls back down. And the next day, he has to repeat the same process over and over and over again. All right? So let's compare that, okay? That story of the guy rolling the boulder up the hill with a bird, okay? A bird making its nest, all right? You can think it's struggling against the winter, the cold rain. It's struggling against the predators, the cats that are trying to eat it. It's struggling against, it's trying to push this boulder up the hill, this metaphorical boulder, by trying to get its nest. What for? Why is it building its nest? So that its young, its babies, its offspring can fight against the winter and try and survive the predators so that they can push the boulder up the hill. So we have Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the hill and what's the, why, what are these guys doing? They're trying to survive. They're pushing the boulder up the hill, so to speak. What for? So that their young can do it. What for? So that their young can do it. This sort of seam, seamless, endless, um, meaningless sort of existence. And you can compare human beings like that as well. It's like we toil, we work, we slave away um, to get food on the table, you know, to get food and we go through life. What for? So we can, push, we're pushing that boulder up the hill for what end? so that our young can push the boulder up the hill as well. Uh, and so when we, when we paint this picture, it's pretty sort of depressing, isn't it? You know, it's like, what's the, what's the point of pushing this boulder up the hill? You know? um, what's the point of struggling through life, you know, just so that my children can also struggle through life? So human beings, like where, you know, we've said there's some differences between human beings and animals, but one of the ways which human beings are different from animals is that they are creative. So human beings can write literature and poetry and music. We can paint beautiful pictures and create amazing pieces of architecture. We have this sort of creative element that a lot of, hum that a lot of animals don't have. Um, and so if you think something like Lord of the Rings or, or Harry Potter, okay, these are worlds whole universes that didn't exist a hundred years ago. And now, these worlds, these creations, exist in the minds of millions of people all over the world. All right, so that the authors, uh, Tolkien and Rowling, they created the whole universe. Same with this painting, um, Starry Night, same with this poem by Hakers. Same with that, like a cathedral, okay? The, a cathedral. Um, what is it meant to do? It's meant to completely titillate all of your senses, that you're just bombarded with beauty all over. All right, from the visuals, the way that the light captures the artwork and the architecture and the roof, uh, and even the way that it sounds in there, that sound is supposed to echo beautifully. It's supposed to be beautiful acoustics. Um, and so humans have the capacity to be creative. All right? That's one thing that separates us from animals. So let's focus on that. All right, so uh, we get a little bit theological here. It's not requ not required for the, the conclusion. So you might think, you know, when you die, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of God. All right? So who's God? Jesus, and you're being judged for whether you did the right thing or the wrong thing. Now that's sort of the the uh, general conclusion, the general thought. Right? 
But there's another way of thinking of it. It says, when you die, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of God. And he is going to read to you, not all of the sins you committed, but all of the poetry you did not write. Okay, and so that's like a real twist on it, isn't it? And so the degree to which you're successful as a human being is the degree to which you are creative. That's what the claim is there, that you are formed to create. So this is Richard Taylor who's making this argument, and he says meaning, meaning in our lives is derived from our capacity to be creative. And there are lots of ways we can be creative. And it's funny, you know, I don't, I, when, I'm, when I was first reading this, I don't think of myself as someone who's generally very creative. I think of myself as far more analytical, sort of maths, mathematically orientated, scientifically. Uh, but, you know, everyone can paint, right? Some people are just way better at it than others, all right? Just like everyone can sing, you know? I could sing, you wouldn't want to hear it. Um, so everyone can do these things, but perhaps, you know, we can create these sort of objects and um, literature and art and so forth. But another thing we can create is a story. And that's what we do when we navigate the world. We create our story, our history, our her story, by our interactions with all other people. Um, so, so, so that's his claim, is that our meaning is derived from creativity. So I have one more point, and this takes it a little bit further. If we think of, uh, if, if you know, if we think of being made in God, God's image, right? So God is a creator, and He has made us in His image. He has created creators, all right? And that being one aspect that separates us from um, animals. Uh, another point is, in if we think of the garden in the Garden of uh, Gethsemane. The Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve in the Garden. Okay, but who did God make first? Adam, that's right. So God made Adam first. Adam is made in God's image. And then um, and then God makes Eve by pulling a rib out of Adam. Right? So you, maybe you guys don't know this story, but that's how it is. God goes, pulls a rib out of Adam and makes Eve. So the point the point one way of interpreting this is that. What you have Adam made in God's image, all right? And Adam's not a man. Adam's a, a hermaphrodite. He's both. He's male and female. And God pulls Eve out of Adam. He separates them. He splits them up. All right? So we have God's image. God's image is um, is is split bifurcated into two parts. All right? And so then, like one way of interpreting it is when those two parts are brought back together. You know, in a lover's embrace, in a conjugal act, sex, all right? That's when God's image is revealed. That God's image is revealed through the conjugal act. Um, and isn't it funny that that in itself is a creative act? That that, that act creates creators if human beings are capable of creating. All right, anyway, I'm not saying go and have kids right now. Just wait a little bit, please. Uh, but there's yeah. lots of ways in which we can derive creativity and meaning from creativity. What do you guys think? Who do you think's they're creative? Who here doesn't think they're creative? Yeah. I think you a little bit, yeah? yeah. <laughs> um, if you had to pick one of these things, what would you say you would like to create for the world? Architecture. Architecture, yeah. Mm -hmm. Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft worlds, yeah. Probably more funny in architecture. <laughs> We're talking about meaning here, not money. <laughs> well, if you, get, if you get good at music, you get rich. Yeah, de you're definitely right. Like, art is something that's not really valued mon monetarily. Because anyone can do it. Yeah. Not anyone anyone, but yeah. Yeah, not a, here we go. Yeah. Not anyone can build a house and have it still stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, I thought it was really cool. Um, that yeah, meaning derived from creativity. So hopefully in the holidays you can uh, create something.